Hi, this is Alan Cagliano, Associate Professor of History at Campbell University, a former merchant mariner and an instructor in maritime industry policy. And welcome to this episode of not what's going on with shipping, but we're back to what's going on in the Suez because the news is out today, July 7th, Motor Vessel Ever Given is getting underway. Her and her gnomes will be heading northbound out of the Suez, out of the Great Bitter Lake, heading up to Port Said for eventual sailing away from Egypt. It seems as if the Suez Canal Authority and Ever Given Home Company, Evergreen, and her owners have come to a settlement. After over 100 days, since March 29th, the ship has been anchored in the Great Bitter Lake. She went aground on March 23rd, but now it appears that Ever Given has finally been released and will be setting sail today, later on today, heading northbound out of the Great Bitter Lake, heading up to Port Said for an inspection before departure. We're not exactly sure yet where she's going, but let's go ahead and take a look at the story that's out on her. So this is a story that came out yesterday. This is the uh, story that came out on Ever Given's detention order being lifted. Uh, this is a Reuters story uh, on GCAP, and they talked about the fact that now that finally they have released a detention order, in other words, she's no longer under arrest and she's free to sail as soon as arrangements can be made to get her out. But the bigger story was here, this is the Bloomberg story that came out and goes into some more detail here and I'll go over some of the, the highlights here in the story. Uh, again, it kind of recaps here, it talks about it. The big issue was the settlement deal that's been signed between the canal and the owners of the vessel. It's not Evergreen. Evergreen is not the owners of the vessel, even though it's plastered on the side. It's actually a Japanese company, Shoei Kisan Kashia Limited. They're the ones who own the vessel. This is a deal that comes out of Japan where the vessel was built. Sometimes ship owners or shipyards, I should say, will work with owners to basically build vessels and then they lease them to commercial operators. And that's something we've been talking about here. Those are those NOOs we've talked about before. And you see that right here with SKK. Uh, it goes in here, freeing the, the ship just six days after the incident last March may have won the authority some kudos. But again, one of the things we saw was the estimated $10 billion worth of traffic that was building up each day. So one of the big issues here has been how much money has going to be paid to the Egyptians to release the vessel. Uh, Osama Rabi, who's the head of the Suez Canal Authority, basically said this on Egyptian TV, we have preserved our full rights regarding the cost of the rescue operation and the damage caused to the navigation course. We also preserve the close relationship with the largest clients of the authority and the economic and political relations with Japan. So that's been a big issue going back is, is how much can Egypt push this before they start losing kind of leverage with these companies. Uh, and it was a very dicey thing the Egyptians had to do. They, they've they got a monopoly. They own the Suez Canal. Shipping companies are not going to go around the canal because it's too expensive. But at the same time, too, they had to be very careful of not to create an organized opposition against them. Uh, the ship's sitting there with 17,600 boxes on board. Again, if you look at this picture here, a great picture that was done, you can see them there, all those boxes up, stacked ridiculously high. This is the issue with ever given why it was so tough to even talk about taking those containers off if you look at how high just this stack right here you're talking about four six eight almost ten high that's that's ten stories those are eight foot high containers and then you probably have as many containers inside the whole of the vessel so again you're, you're talking roughly here you know the the size of a 14 15 story building uh absolutely massive in size uh, she's got 17,600 boxes. She's a 20,000 TEU vessel. But again, some of those containers are 40 footers. And so there's less number of containers on board. Uh, she held up the 400 ships, but this is the big issue right here. As the issue moved to the Egyptian courts, the ever given seized pending a resolution. The stakes grew on both sides. Egypt wanted more than $900 million. The counter offer was around 150 million, which is again, what we believe the cost of the vessel to be is about $160 million. And it's very unlikely that a company is going to offer more than the, the retail value of the vessel. Now, the issue here is the cargo. That's where the liability comes in, the P&I insurance, the protection and indemnity insurance. Uh, neither side commented on the size of the settlement and provided other details. Rabi, in another television interview, said it was near the $550 million mark. This is what they initially came down to. The new figure has, has been presented in revised court documents. He declined to be specific, however, citing confidentiality agreements relating to the money issue. Okay. I don't think we're ever going to find out how much this cost. The Egyptians are going to want to say they got the full amount. 
the Japanese and the Ever Given's companies are going to want there and say, no, we didn't pay that much. And so I think much like we've seen in, in cases, other places, we're never going to find out how much this is. It'll eventually come out, but, uh, but for right now, we're, we're just not going to know right here. And Egypt wants that money to, to be used to help finance the expansion of the canal. Uh, but again, I, I think they they didn't get close to that amount. Again, I'd go back to probably around 250 million. I'm almost going to guess is, is somewhere where that figure finally fell in, but we will have to wait and see. Uh, again, they talked about the large uh, expansion project going on. They're going to widen the southern end of the canal. Uh, the question about widening the canal is a very interesting one. The question is not just if you widen the canal, but do you prevent the expansion of vessels into it? Once you widen it, people will build bigger ships. It's up to the canal to make mandates to set the limits for what the new Suez Max capacities are for going through the canal. If they widen the canal, deepen it, and it, companies just respond with bigger vessels, then there's really no reason to keep doing this, and we could see another potential issue happen again. goes on here. He talks about uh, the president says he asked the canal chief what the most challenging aspect of refloating the vessel might be. Ruby said it would be the offloading containers to process. Some may take up to three months. Let's be ready, the president told Ruby. Whatever it costs, we have to be ready in a crisis like this. And that's going to be interesting is how the Egyptians uh, respond to this. Right now, Ever Given is sitting right there in the canal. You can see a, a section of the northbound convoy coming up right now. But the big thing is right here, they updated her ETA. Uh, this was initially showing Rotterdam uh, for, for, for April 1st. Uh, that's been changed. It's now showing a, a port, port Said, Port Said, excuse me, which is going to be on July 7th at 8 p.m. That's 8 p.m. Egyptian time. That's plus two UTC. So she'll be getting underway probably the end of the next northbound convoy. She'll tag in behind. Supposedly, there's going to be a big ceremony. Uh, the reason she's going to head up here into Port Said is a couple of reasons. We're not sure yet. We haven't seen the information yet. Number one, there is a big container terminal up here. The APM terminal is up here. So you have this large terminal up here. Not sure. I doubt she's going to basically offload. Oh, that's actually not part of the terminal right there. Terminals up over here. Uh, but basically, I, I don't think she's going to offload at this time uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, she's probably just going to go in and get uh, uh, certified for deep water transit. Her hull has been inspected while she's in the Great Bitter Lake, but I don't think that she's going to be cleared yet by the Classification Society to head out. There's also needs to be arrangements to be made for the offload. Is she going to go to her original discharge ports, Rotterdam, Felix Stowe? and Hamburg in the Netherlands, England, and Germany, or are they going to find another place to discharge them? Uh, it's going to be really tough to discharge this vessel for a couple of reasons. Some of these owners of these containers may have already filed claims against them since it's over 60 days. They may not want what's in these containers, which means the containers could wind up sitting in a terminal for a long period of time. And so that's going to be an issue. Uh, some of the Material in them could have gone bad, spoiled bad. It could be refrigerated material that's gone bad. Who knows? And so it's going to cause a huge amount. And plus, if you dump 17,600 containers in a single terminal, that's going to cause problems in that terminal because it takes up a lot of space. But they're going to have to get that containers off to, for this vessel to go into a dry dock to get certified before she can set sail again. And then she's going to have to head back to Asia. And that means a passage through the Suez Canal. So uh, we'll be keeping track of this, seeing what else happens here. Uh, hopefully, we will see her start moving. This is Marine Traffic. If you guys do not follow Marine Traffic, I suggest you do. It's a great app. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I use it to follow vessels all the time. There is Ever Given. Uh, waiting to go. We're waiting to see her go. So it will be interesting to see uh, the finally see her get moving right here. Let me zoom in here a little more here. And you'll see her there sitting right there, uh, basically just been sitting there now for over 100 days uh, waiting to go. So it'll be good to see her on her way. Uh, we'll keep you posted, uh, do some uh, uh, updates as the story develops. Uh, I'm going to be traveling this week, so I'll be doing it from the road. So we'll see how that works out. So I hope you enjoyed this broadcast. If you like following along with what's going on with shipping in the, around the world today, please follow my YouTube channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. Also, give it a thumbs up so that when new uh, videos, uh, uh, so that you can be share these videos with other people on YouTube. And feel free to share it on social media platforms. This is Sal signing off.